hi everyone good morning how are you all doing i trust all is well with you so the title of today's message is the spirit of memokan the spirit of memokan let us pray our heavenly father most gracious daddy we thank you this morning we thank you for your love we thank you for all the good things you've done for us. We thank you for the grace of sleeping and waking. We thank you, God, for not giving up on us. Thank you for not, you know, uh, treating us or relating with us according to the works of our hands. Lord, we are not righteous. It's just your mercy that we enjoy every day. We say be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 that we should come and reason together. Lord, as a family, I stand, O oh God, on behalf of everyone that would watch this video. I pray, Lord, if there is anything we have done that may make you promises not to be fulfilled in our lives or that might make your words not to germinate to have roots in our lives lord please take them away forgive us in jesus name and lord i pray for myself let your spirit fall afresh on me speak through me i don't want to see myself at the end of this video i want to watch the video and ask myself did i just do that i want you lord who got to give me confidence i want you to give me the boldness that i need in the mighty name of jesus let your word come out of me let it flow in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak through me in the mighty name of Jesus. And let your word minister life to the souls of people that will hear it in the mighty name of Jesus. All the prayers that we will pray in the course of this message, Lord, we pray that as we decree, you will establish them in the mighty name of Jesus. And light will shine upon our ways in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your answered our prayers. Oh, you have answered my prayer over myself and your children. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. And our text is Esther chapter 1, verse 16 to verse 21. And Mimukan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen had not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Hasuros. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king Hasuros commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it, verse 19, if it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it shall not be altered, that Vashti come no more before King Hasuros, and let the king give her, give her royal estate unto another that is better than she is. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, but both to the great and small. That's the, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. But the, the Spirit of God is just so powerful that we read the word of God over and over, and each time we read, it gives us, you know, more understanding. His, word is, his words are fresh in our mind, they are fresh every day. So Memukan is uh, Memukan was one of the princes of the land, and he has high authority too. Let me. Uh, there's a portion of that uh, chapter one that talked about his position. Okay, verse fourteen. It mentioned all the name of all the other uh, princes. There were seven, which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the kingdom. The authority to make that suggestion of uh, to suggest to suggest that punishment. Okay, so uh, after Vashti had done what she did, which we all agree to that, no matter under any circumstance, no matter what her reasons were, what she did was actually wrong. So, the judgment, Memukan, the st Memukan then stood up and suggested <laughs> punishment, very terrible one, to the king. This spirit, this voice stood against Vashti. What she did was wrong, but the punishment was so, so much. Who knows if Memukan was not there, if he had not spoken, maybe the king would have, you know, just given her a little punishment. He exaggerated her mistake. 
That is the spirit we want to pray against this morning. And another point is that he made it so quick. So it's not like they had time to sit over it and say, okay, well, this is what we are going to uh, do to her and then allow other people to, to bring in their suggestion. Like, And I feel this spirit, this evil voice, I think, I, I want to believe that it targets people with great uh, position of great glory. Matthew chapter 27 verse 17 uh, to verse 20. It said, it's, uh, therefore, they, therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew, for, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. That's the voice of Memokan. They even spoke against our Lord Jesus Christ. Another voice, this same voice spoke against uh, uh, Mordecai. So, so in verse 8, it said to the king, and Haman said unto the king, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not the king's profit to suffer them, to let them leave. So verse 9 says, If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it onto the king's treasuries. He will pay it. For the Jews to be punished, for them to be put to death. The first prayer point is this. You will say, Father, every voice that is speaking against my destiny, that is speaking against my blessings, that is exaggerating my error in the presence of my of my helper. Lord, today, give them a change act. God doesn't want the death of any sinner. So the first prayer is you will pray that God will make them change their minds. Pray that way. The second way, the other way you will pray it is that God, Father, any voice that is speaking against my destiny, that is suggesting punishment to my helpers against me, God, keep them busy. If God kept Memokan busy that day, if he, if he had to, you know, his containers arrived and he stood up and he went there, do you know he won't be on seat? To make that kind of deal, to make that kind of uh, uh, suggestion to the king. Another point is for God to silence them. If he wants to silence them by making them sick, or he wants to silence them by killing them, whatever he wants to do, he should just do. Psalm chapter uh, Psalm sixty-four, verse seven. I, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Who cares? If they refuse to be silent by being quiet, that's what will happen to them. The Word of God says that any voice that rises up against us in judgment, we will condemn. So you are going to condemn me that God, any voice that is standing against me, standing against my destiny, Lord, silence them now in the mighty name of Jesus. You will pray again that, Lord, I will not lose my glory. I will not lose my honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, you will pray that, Lord, I will not be replaced. I will not be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be dishonored in the mighty name of Jesus. Evil voices will not speak against my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody, wherever they are gathered, in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my spouse's house, in, in the church, in my community, anywhere they are gathered, that they are speaking against my destiny, that they are exaggerating my error, that they are suggesting punishment for my life. Lord, I pray today, first you will give them a change of heart if they refuse to change. I pray the Lord, just like your word says in that Psalm chapter 64 verse 7, shoot them with your arrow. 
Let them be silent over my case in the mighty name of Jesus. You will pray it with holy anger. I cannot shout here because I'm in the studio. So I can't be shouting. But I want you to pray it with holy anger, with all your, all your strength. Pray it like your life depends on this. Because this voice of memory can look at the danger, look at the look at the look look at the damage that, that voice did to the life life of Queen Vashti. If not for Memokan, her husband would have been, I'm sure he wouldn't have he, he wouldn't have looked at her and placed that kind of judgment. 2 verse 1 says, After these things, when the wrath of the king Arasuros was appeased, he remembered Vashti. He remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. So he really didn't feel good about that thing, I want to believe. But the judgment had been placed already. They were not enemies. But look at that woman, that, that, that prince. But look at what the voice of that, of that prince did to that woman. I want you to be angry when you are praying this. I can decree it with full confidence, with faith. And I want you to pray this last one that God, I want you to stand up for me where I cannot stand. Stand for me where my voice cannot get to. Raise voices for me. Imagine when Memokan spoke that day, if the other six uh, princes stood up to say, no, that's too much. What did she do to warrant that? You know, you know what she did, you know, it's actually wrong, but that's too much. Nobody could stand up, nobody stood up for her to say that was too much. Instead, they accepted that, that judgment. You will shout and cry to God, that Father, where my voice cannot get to, raise a voice for me. Raise, raise a voice for me where it matters, in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree to your life in the mighty name of Jesus that every voice that is speaking against your life, against your destiny, against your blessings, in the presence of your helpers, that they are speaking against you. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that God will silence them today. You will not be dishonored. You will not lose your place. You will not be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. In everything that concerns you, you will not be disgraced. You will not be ridiculed in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not lose your honor. You will not lose your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you that you will not be foolish. Pride will not consume, will not destroy you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you for today's message. We thank you for answered prayers because we believe you that we have spoken to your ears. You will hear us and hearken unto the voice of our cry in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your have answered us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your support. God bless you. Have an amazing day.